The comic fam needs to slow down. They're spending so much damn... Yeah, you see that? Just get that, dude. Yeah, it's fine. I'm immune. I'm vaccinated against the FOMO bug. The FOMO bug is contagious. Comic books are trending, and hit that like, slap the subscribe button. We're celebrating today. Today's stream marks the five-year anniversary that we've been producing the Trending 10 Hot Damn. Oh my gosh. Slap that like, hit that subscribe. Guys, we've been here every single week for over 250 consecutive weeks. Comic Tom holding down the fort. Five years of the Trending 10 video for you, comic fam. We will be the first podcast to release content about this list weekly. Whoa. We appreciate every single one of you, and we ain't stopping anytime soon. Let's get into the list. I'm just glad you turned those lights off. Starting to give me a headache. <laughs> Back to normal here. Let's get to it. Number 10 on the list. It's a book I have. I actually had two books on the list today. We're talking about The Sickness. Ryan's number bad one. at specking, according to him. I'm not specking. I just look at the catalog and I pick things that look cool, which is what I'm here to tell you guys to do. Yes, this is a cool book. I enjoyed it. Yes, it's hitting $12 averages, and we just saw a recent high raw sale of $24. But this is why you really have to read through your previews guide every single month. I talk about it a lot on here. I don't have some sort of magical wizard brain that Tom seems to think I do for picking spec books or knowing what things are going to pop off or be cool. I just read the catalog. I get into the section at the very bottom where they shove in all the small press indie stuff, which is where you find a lot of cool things like this tucked away and hidden. This is a cool little horror comic, black and white, with some really spooky visuals in here. I've read it twice now, and I honestly still can't even really tell you what it's about because it's more, for me, it's more about the the creepy visuals, again, like I'm saying. And the depressing part is that issue two is not coming out until December. So you, if you really want to, you have time to track a book like this down and read it a couple times before December. It's a dense story, but it's all about the visuals, as Ryan said. The line work is superb. The inks are excellent. It's going to give you a haunting feeling as you're reading it. And I also... I'm going to throw out a word of caution on this one. This book spiked up a lot because it's got some buzz in like the YouTube space. I think this is a good one to maybe hold off a little bit because I don't think a lot of stores ordered it. So members are hunting for it online. I think you'll be able to find it for cheaper in a little bit. To show you how few people are paying attention, we only had two people order this book at our shop and Ryan was one of them. Keep in mind, there is also a one in five, a one in 10 and a one in 25 ratio variant that are all selling books briskly on ebay utilize code tom 101 to support what we do every single week and you get access to a free two-week subscription of the best comic app in existence and we say that often but i really really mean it because after this last update hot damn before traditionally we would just utilize key collector comics to keep track of the key comics there's a lot of them but Knowing like the full catalog, the full run of books has become important to many collectors and Key Collector Comics knew that. So what they did over this last update is they added 400,000 comics to the app. This is a game changer. This is now your Pokédex for comic collecting. This is now the replacement of Overstreet permanently. I use this app all the time and it has never been easier to catalog. Not only has the non-key button made it easier to find every single book that you want, but you can select multiple books at the same time for a group ad. And because there have been so many new books added to Key Collector and they've always given you a value tracker so you can, you can get a good estimate of what your entire collection is worth with this new update, which is cool. And if you watch this video, you know we do the top 10 trending books every week, but on the app, these 10 books are sourced from a bigger list of 20. You're missing out on half of these trending books every single week if you're not using the code TOM101 to go check out Key Collector. Now at the list at number nine, we have Hulk Annual issue number one. This is hitting $5 average sales, which is cover price by the way, but high sales are hitting 13 to $14 right now because there's a backup story that was solicited as a preview for the upcoming, now released, Philip Kennedy Johnson Hulk issue number one. More on that in a little bit. However, with the release of Hulk one, we're finding out that this preview was actually a prequel that features a major character now introduced in the new Philip Kennedy Johnson run called The Eldest. We're seeing an increase of copies sold of 860% for a book that you can still find at your LCS. 
Annuals are more difficult to acquire than they should be because if you're subscribing to it through the diamond pull box system, you aren't guaranteed to get the annual unless you go in and physically order it. And you know what? We have one guy who did his job and made sure he ordered his annual. I keep telling you, read the catalog. It's in there. Unfortunately, like Russ says, I am subscribed to Hulk, but Hulk annual is treated as a completely separate item and you will not get it unless you go in and add it manually yourself. How stoked were you about Hulk 1? We warned the community not to cancel Hulk, to stay on, because Mr. Johnson is killing it, and it's a more focus on kind of like the Al Ewing vibes that he brought, more of a monster story. Nick Klein is absolutely slaying it, drawing monsters, violent visuals, and Bruce Banner is back to being scared of the Hulk. He is running from him. He is not trying to let the beast take over, much differently than the break we had with Sir Cates. Yeah, I'm quickly learning that Philip Kennedy Johnson is probably currently my favorite writer. He might have eclipsed James Tyne in the fourth for my number one spot, which is a pretty big deal for somebody like me. But Philip Kennedy Johnson is doing action comics. He's doing the Hulk now. He's doing the Green Lantern backup stories. He's killing it on this 007 comic book from Dynamite out of nowhere. Just everything he writes has been phenomenal, including older stuff like The Last God, which I will I will die on that hill. That book, that book is great. We knew the teases that this was going to be a more monster-focused story, but I wasn't expecting to see the monsters that he chose to bring into this narrative. Pick up Hulk, add it to your pull list, and Russ, why don't you hit him with numero ocho? Number eight on the list, Spectacular Spider-Man number 116. I love seeing this run get more love because everyone cares about Amazing Spider-Man, but Spectacular has so many great keys, including this one. Now, you may have picked up this book because of the amazing Sabretooth fighting black suit Spidey cover, but did you know it's also the first appearance of The Foreigner? Well, we now have confirmation that Christopher Abbott's going to be playing The Foreigner in the new Craven movie, which is causing this book to spike 186% this week. $40 $40 average sales and $230 for a CGC 9.8. That's a pretty big increase in copies sold considering how affordable this comic is. The heights this book reached was past $400 back in March of last year, seeing itself for half as we approach the Craven movie. The trailer dropped, and I'm really stoked about it. And I want to know your guys' thoughts because there's a lot of people who have mixed feelings about seeing Aaron Taylor Johnson get that lion's blood and get on all fours and start killing people. I've seen a lot of complaints about that about him getting his powers from lion's blood, but when you look at the original comics, he was given some sort of magical potion from some, you know, ancient wizard guy or something. Like, I would probably rather see the lion's blood thing myself, but my biggest complaint with this trailer, at least, is it gets me all hyped up to see Kraven go up against Spider-Man, and Spider-Man is nowhere to be seen in this movie. You gotta have Kraven fight other Spider-Man villains instead. There are a substantial number of spiders in the trailer, and who knows, we may actually see Spider-Man showing up. I think they learned from Morbius and the lack of blood, you know, the PG-13 rating they got, that they had to up the maturity, which is why I'm all in seeing this movie. I also am most excited to see, like, a transformation of a real-looking rhino. This is something we've never seen on screen. And wasn't he in a suit in the comic books? I digress. El Muerto, the Sony luchador version of spider-man has now been completely pushed possibly canceled as well so i don't know what's going on over at sony but they're shaking things up and craven is still happening we're here at number seven with batman the official comic adaptation from 1989 the comic book adaptation of the michael keaton batman film we're seeing 12 dollar average sales for this with a high 9.8 of 295 for the regular version However, there is also a prestige version that has recently hit 205 for a 9.8. But why would something called prestige be selling for less than something called regular? That doesn't make any sense. Well, the prestige is a thicker cardstock, easier to find in high grade than the regular comic. And we know that that paper back then was atrocious. And amazingly, Christian Bale was in The Prestige and also played Batman. So that's a nice way to tie all of this together. But that Prestige cardstock comic actually cost more in the 90s, but is worth less now. You can even see that there are eight copies in 9.9 on the census of the higher quality Prestige just because they stayed in better condition for longer. We got a 122% increase in copies sold of this book. And spoiler alert, this is the only book on the trending 10 that has anything to do with the Flash movie because that that movie was not good and the wider comic community agrees that that movie was not good and everybody seems to be in unanimous agreement except me a little bit that michael keaton batman was the best part of that movie which is why we're seeing the batman from michael keaton make it to the list when you consider all of the things that were shoved into this flash movie to kind of make up for the ezra miller aspect of it all uh it does make sense that the nostalgia factor is driving sales of this book however me personally 
I kind of liked Supergirl a little bit more than Michael Keaton Batman, but that's a personal preference thing. Well, my favorite part was Nick Cage Superman. So what does that tell you? Let us know what you think about The Flash in the comment section below. Because at the list at number six, Amelia Clark is making it. Her first appearance on screen happened with Secret Invasion this past week. And we have Meet the Scrolls issue number one featuring Gaia's first appearance, which is the person Amelia portrays in show. Hitting $8 average sales. Let me take you back to April where this book was hitting $200 for a CGC 9.8. It dropped to 100 The last 9.8 sale was 89 bucks. Hot damn, that dropped. We are seeing a 160% increase in copies sold of this book in the week that the Secret Invasion show comes out. We last talked about this four weeks ago when it hit number five on the trending list, but since then there's only been three new slabs added to the census, which kind of gives you a hint of where people's excitement levels are. I haven't watched the show yet, but I've heard from other people who have, like Tom, that they're not that excited for it, which is depressing because I was super hyped for this. Uh, Secret Invasion comic is one of my favorite crossover events, but we're going to get into that a little bit more later. Did you see Secret Invasion? I felt very let down. It's clearly a slow burn, but we will save it because we have more scrolls to talk about later on the list. If you like what we do, the best way to support the show, as you have for the last five years, is subscribing to the Mystery Mail Call and get us to send you awesome comics every month. ASM 26, the death of Kamala Khan, trade dress is going in one per box. ComicTom101.com to join the community. It's 35 bucks plus shipping in a box with care, and we send out some dope exclusives, affordable, and you support the show. Next on the list, at number five, is a Netflix movie. Number five on the list, Nimona number one. Now, don't be looking in comic book back issue bins for this because this was released as a graphic novel. In 2015, $10 average sales and $22 for a high sale. Now, you would know the writer, Indy Stevenson from Lumberjanes. They wrote that book and it was absolutely fantastic and I know we talked about it on the list before. But this is one of the books that started as a webcomic on Tumblr and after they released Tumblr comics for a couple years, this got turned into a graphic novel and now they're turning it into a Netflix movie. The thing that excites me the most is we have Chloe Grace Moretz who has already done a lot of animation. She was Wednesday Adams in the uh, Adams Family animated movie. She was in the Tom and Jerry movie. She played Snow White, but she is now going to be the main character, Nimona, in this animated feature on Netflix. She also portrayed Hit Girl, which is one of my favorite Nick Cage movies, comes full circle. And this right here looks like a pretty fun movie, not really something I think I'm going to be into, but the animation reminds me of Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, the second we pulled out the trailer, the animation was the first thing Tom and I both were like, oh, okay, like this this looks this looks a little cooler than I would have expected. For me, this this is exciting because it's it shows you what you can do if you have a good enough product. Like somebody put this on Tumblr as a webcomic. And it was so successful that Harper Collins reached out and said, we want to publish this. We want to make this into a real thing. Congrats on doing something really cool. I also like the fact that Andy Stevenson said that they actually created this back when they were in high school. And to many people's surprise, this happens pretty often. I know James Tynan Wind was a creation he did when he was back in school. You know, you got Savage Dragon, Eric Larson, goodness, that was also created in high school. So clearly... There's some love for this comic because the movie is coming. I may have to give it some of my attention. With next week's release, we are seeing a 433% increase in copies sold. We need your assistance now, comic fam, because we've realized over the last five years, we may have been saying this next character's name wrong for five years. At the list at number four, Wolverine number 10 from 2007. We're talking Logan's son. We're talking Dakin? 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 Yeah, we've been calling him Dakin. And then we were like, is it Dakin or Dakin? Like, let's look it up on YouTube and try and see what other people are saying. And then we found out some people are calling it Dakin, and we just made it way worse for ourselves. And now we're just co totally confused. We're just throwing all three out there and letting you guys decide. So please give us your opinion in the comments. I still think Dakin is correct because Dakin is a metal band. But $50 average sales and a high CGC 9.8 for $340 just a couple weeks ago. This book is moving quickly on speculation that we may see him in the new Deadpool 3 movie fighting Wolverine and Deadpool. Could he be a villain? Could he be a victim? Could he be just a Wolverine variant like the rumors are suggesting? Well, this book is up 220% in copies sold in just seven days, and an increase of 25 copies have been added to the census since we last chatted about this back in October when we found out that Wolverine was going to be in Deadpool 3 because spec is pointing towards that torch being passed. It was unlikely that we we're ever going to see Hugh Jackman again portray Logan, and now that we got him coming back to the big screen, members are trying to hunt who's going to portray the next Wolverine. 
Yeah, I guess that's really their only option, right? You either recast Logan and make another Wolverine, or you introduce a spin-off son character like like Dakin, which is how I'm going to say it. X-23, where are you at? At the list at number three, Secret Invasion issue number one, seeing $20 average sales, 9.8s hitting $170. The heights this book reached was $447 back in 2021 when the news was announced that Samuel L. Jackson would be leading his own Disney Plus series. It dropped this week. Calling it a slow burn is being generous. It was kind of boring. When everything I see posted on the internet has nothing to do with the plot of the show and they're talking about how crappy the new AI intro is, you know that you did not stun them with anything spectacular. You kind of bored them to sleep. What is going on, dude? Why did they use AI in this show? Like, they used David Mack art during the Echo season. How dare they not give this work to artists in the comic industry? And then, to, like, make matters worse... Hardly utilize the successful event comic book as part of their main narrative. Considering how big and epic and broad the scope of was the Secret Invasion comic, I, I'm not surprised that they can't exactly do that on the screen, especially on like a TV budget. But there is no excuse for doing the AI art on the opening credits. That actually made me really mad. And it's actually, I think, part of the reason why I haven't pulled the trigger and actually started watching the show yet. Because I don't want to sit through those opening credits, but I also don't want to skip them because I want to I know my enemy. Well, I will say this. Rotten Tomatoes puts the score at like the 60 percentile for episode number one. To give you some perspective, although I really enjoyed She-Hulk at release, that show had an 80 percent Rotten Tomatoes. So if you didn't like She-Hulk, it's very unlikely that you're going to like Secret Invasion, despite Samuel L. Jackson being badass. Number two on the list, this actually is probably the biggest FOMO bug bite on the list, except maybe compared to number one, stay tuned, Ruins number one from 1995. This is a Warren Ellis book from 28 years ago. We are seeing $25 average sales. I saw a high raw sale for $75. I saw a set of two going for $90. I saw a newsstand set of issue one and and issue two go for $299. Now, this is a Marvel Alternative Stories, which is basically Marvel's version of Elseworlds. There is a 417% increase in copies sold this week because all over TikTok, we have creators who are freaking out about the fact that this is so dark, so crazy, so many terrible things are happening. Again, Warren Ellis got given the keys to Marvel and they said, here, mess with everything everything and he absolutely did it nothing is canon and we have people freaking out and paying way more than they should for this book chill out folks 18 9.8s on the census means that no one was specking on this book i do encourage everyone to read it it is dark it's mature however it's a lot of fun you know it's like a juxtaposition to the kurt busey x marvel narrative where you really see like a world view of what superheroes would actually be like if they existed you know those classic alex ross acetate covers well this right here is warren ellis doing the opposite take the superheroes and make it their worst case scenario they get Peter Parker's superpowers, and he dies from those superpowers. You know, you got Nightcrawler eating himself because he's in jail, and he's got to, like, cannibalize himself and eat his tail. You know, Silver Surfer, when he gets the power cosmic, has to rip open his chest because he can't breathe in space. It's dark. It's gritty. It's a lot of fun. But TikTokers and, you know, people on YouTube have been making content about this because it's so gripping, you know? When you can say, hey, did you ever know that Charles Xavier was the president and employed Kingpin to manage all the mutants in prison, and they take out Cyclops' eyes so he can't use his mutant powers? It's a very intriguing thing to solicit in a short form content. Uh, clearly, we're making videos wrong, damn it. I was just going to say that, yeah, we got to change our whole game plan over here because this sounds interesting. I'd never heard about this book until we did these uh, notes for this list, so I got to track it down myself. And this is one of those books that, as a shop owner, I've seen copies of this for years and years. Anyone who was buying these books in 1995 probably got a copy because if you bought The Marvels with Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross, you had to get Ruins. These were books that you had to have, so I'm still getting collections with these in here. It's just the people now who didn't know about it that are 
are freaking out. So guys, these are out there. These are available. This reminds me a lot of when we had the Batman versus Aliens freak out because Dark Horse sold Aliens to Marvel and we weren't going to get those stories reprinted. Those books hit heights of $100 raw and now they're available in the $12 to $15 range. So be careful. Be on the lookout for good deals on this. It's a fantastic read, but don't overpay. Like and subscribe. You know, we're going to be here every single week covering what's happening in the comic marketplace and at the list at number one. We're going back to 2004. She-Hulk number three with the first appearance of Bailey Briggs. The first appearance of Spider-Boy? No. No. That's not who this is. I think this is a different Bailey Briggs. I think... Dan, Dan Slott must have known someone. It must have been like his best friend in elementary school or something, and he just can't get the name out of his head because we just learned this week that Spider-Boy's real name is also Bailey Briggs in the Edge of Spider-Verse issue number three where he finally takes his mask off and you get to see him with a giant head of red hair, and he's like eight years old or something. He's a really little kid doing all this spider stuff. But his name is Bailey Briggs, and people connected that back to this She-Hulk issue from 20 years ago almost. Well, Dan Slott created a character named Bailey Briggs back in 2004, and it is an engineer who like was murdered and becomes a ghost and came and went in comics. But he also has red hair. <laughs> so it must be the same Bailey Briggs. Well, it's caused an uptick of copies sold of 1,733% hot damn. $18 average sales, high sales for 135. There is 14 copies graded at a 9.8 and one copy graded at a 10.0 that we've never seen sold before. No public record of that. So I'm, Telling members to hold tight. This seems like something that can blow up even more because there's so much Spider-Boy spec happening. But this may not be the same character. And when you consider other new characters that have been introduced in the last couple years, Tosin, the book is probably going to drop. You may not want to buy this book right now. And if anything, don't buy it in high grade at a 9.8. Look for high grade raw copies. Look for it on the hunt. In fact, there's a handful of books on this very list that I would avoid CGC copies of. Go do your hunting, send them in yourself. You may come up double, triple. So the high was 135, but consider this. Someone the same month paid $100 for a CGC 9.6. You could have gotten three or four raw copies, if not more, gotten them graded and actually had more copies than that. Spending that much money on a 9.6 is not a great idea. Don't get bit. Keep an eye out on that FOMO bug because you always need to. Geek responsibly. No. Said, <laughs> said, Butch is, he's uh, very vocal. He's, he's telling you to subscribe and like. That's what he says whenever he meows. We have other videos for you to check out. Ryan, what do you have? I've got books that I'm going to throw into the mystery mail call very soon, so make sure you pay attention to the channel. Secret Wars, number one. It's important, obviously, because it's Secret Wars. Secret Wars, it's important. This is World Treat, number one, a variant from Dallas by Julian Patino Tedesco, one of my favorite cover artists. Someone's getting that in the mystery mail call. Comicton101.com to join the community, support the show, and join us on Whatnot this Wednesday, because I'm not just upping the books we're putting in the mail call, we're upping the giveaways every week on Whatnot, and I'm giving away a first appearance of Spider Punk. We'll see you soon. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Let us know what you think in the comment section below, and we'll see you very soon.